Video number four, Common Sense by Thomas Paine. About 130 years after this, they fell again into the same error. The hankering which the Jews had for the adulterous customs of the heathens is something exceedingly unaccountable. But so it was that the laying hold of the misconduct of Samuel's two sons, who were entrusted with some sec secular concerns, they came in an abrupt and clamorous man manner to Samuel, saying, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. And here we cannot but observe that their motives were bad, that they might be like unto other nations, etc. The heathens, whereas their true glory laid in being as much unlike them as possible. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto the Lord, and the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even unto this day wherewith they have forsaken me, and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Now therefore hearken unto their voice, albeit protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them, i.e. not of any particular king, but the general manner of the kings of the earth, whom Israel was so eagerly copying after. And notwithstanding the great <clears throat> distance of time and difference of manners, the character is still in fashion. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This shall be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariots. This description agrees with the present mode of impressing men. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties. And will set them to ear his ground and to read his harvest. And to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots. And he will take your daughters to be confessionaries. <clears throat> and to be cooks and to be bakers. This describes the expense and luxury as well as the oppression of kings. And he will take your fields and your olive yards, even the best of them, and give them to his servants. And he will take a, the tenth of your feed and of your vineyards and give them to his officers and to his servants. By which we see that bribery, corruption, and favoritism are the standing vices of kings. And he will take the tenth of your men's servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young men and your asses and put them to his work. And he will take the tenth of your sheep and ye shall be his servants and ye shall cry out in that day because of your king which you shall have chosen. And the Lord will not hear you in that day. This accounts for the continuation of monarchy. Neither do the characters of the few good kings which have lived since either sanctify the title or blot out the sinfulness of the origin. The high economium given of David takes no notice of him officially as a king, but only as a man after God's own heart. Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, Nay, but we will have a king over us, and we may be like all the nations. And that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel continued to reason with them, but to no purpose. And he said before them their ingratitude, but all would not avail. And seeing them fully bent on their folly, he cried out, I will call unto the Lord, and he shall send thunder and rain, which then was a punishment, being in the time of wheat harvest, that you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking you a king.
So Samuel called unto the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, and all the people greatly feared the Lord and Samuel. And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. For we have added to our sins this evil to ask a king. These portions of scripture are direct and positive. They admit of no equivocal construction, that the Almighty hath entered his protest against monarchical government is true, or that the scripture is false. And a man hath good reason to believe that there is as much of kingcraft as priestcraft in withholding the scripture from the public in popish countries, for monarchy in every instance is the popery of government. And we will go to video 5 in a moment when people find out I'm doing videos in here. Okay. Hey.